Hey folks, this will be a brief explanation of the key points in the 21 centimeter dark matter observation with the charged particle implication, a look at what happens next, and a look back in time. We start at cosmic dawn. Under the standard model, there is a cosmic dawn as the first stars come together. The interesting thing happened when their observations showed a different background radiation than they were expecting, and they had to choose between only two viable options to explain this discrepancy. Either the background radiation was higher and hotter than expected, which is sort of what the observation looked like, or the gas was more scattered and cooler than expected. There is little in the standard model of physics that would allow them to choose option A, although they seem to lament this reliance on assumptions with the early universe so poorly constrained, and they recognize the trouble of uncertainty in this study, especially because an almost unscientifically broad range of signals could have been interpreted favorably. Basically, instead of dark matter searches that seek to find and capture a specific dark matter particle, this study sought an observation that did not violate their idea of what the universe could have looked like under a dark matter paradigm. Two different kinds of studies. In the end here, though, there was only one way to choose. Based on the standard universal assumptions, that was B. And alas, it did violate their ideas. The dark matter particles could not be anywhere near as large as scientists had been thinking, which has been our second most critical complaint about the field, and indeed, this dark matter somehow plays outside of lone gravity, such that it can scatter and cool the gases. It is unquestioned that electric charge is the best candidate, but the primary author on this new paper believes you can probably rule out a totally charged dark matter field. It must be noted that two Harvard professors took less than one day to point out that even if a small portion of dark matter is charged, like very small, then it would entirely account for the scattering and observed effects at 21 centimeters. So for you, what's the crux? The no-charge folks don't disagree with the mechanisms of how that could work. They simply state that such a property of dark matter would have to have been seen and could be seen across the universe. Such an electric force across the cosmos would have to leave some kind of signal, correct? Well, that's a big topic and one for our next dark matter video, but suffice to say, we keep finding more dust, more plasma, and we keep finding ways for the universe to hide it. At this time, let's actually focus on just one issue that must not be forgotten, yet still seems well on its way to going there now. Halton Arp's intrinsic redshift. Basically, he pointed out a number of galaxies that don't match standard redshift science. He convinced many, including two of Canada's best about a decade ago, who kept the fire going after Arp's death. But not without hiccups, as Sloan showed almost the entire cosmos does follow the standard pattern, and selection effects had been considered in the work. But while much of the cosmos is further constrained, the anomalies do remain. The current understanding as of 2017 of redshift includes these anomalous redshifts, things that don't match the standard model at all, and gravitational lensing has proven helpful but inadequate to address the whole of the problem. Either every anomaly is a lucky coincidental case of something not yet understood about the physical cosmos, or there are indeed these few non-cosmological redshift anomalies. Nowhere is this more important than in early cosmology, at cosmic dawn, and yet it is 100% absent from the mainstream push in this field. See you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.